Hello, and hey. welcome back to another <laughs> week. Is it? Has it been a week? I think. I it's guess. still April. And the April Fools remain us. Well, shit. <laughs> that's how I feel. <laughs> I see the soundboard has been updated, I heard. Yeah, the... that's. I was late to the call today. I was like, oh, it's going to add one thing. It's fine. There's always a new surprise every week, so it keeps me guessing. <sighs> Isn't that true? How has your week been? Well, I went into the last week with a new perspective and said, you know what? You can only control so much in your life, so don't stress out about the things that you have no control over. And it and really how helped. Has that for you? It helped a little bit. Still Good. a mess, but yes. helped a lot. It's a very healthy mindset because mm-hmm. it's the truth. I was like, I'm doing the best that I can. And if that's not good enough, then I don't care because I know I'm trying my best. <laughs> you just sometimes have to give it up and give it to Godney and just hope for the best. Right? It's true. That's all you can do is bring your personal best to the table. Mm-hmm. I also reread the second chapter of The Four Agreements. Oh, which is um, don't take anything personally. That's like chapter, Very. that's agreement number two. Very healthy. Not sponsored. But I Yet, reread yeah. the whole thing and then I listened to it like on audiobook. And I was like, uh-huh. okay, we're good. Yes. Just in everything. It's a very good book, by the way. I've read it twice now and I'm probably going to read I it again. I also feel like that's a Britney recommendation. I feel like she would definitely. She did. Uh, she posted, because um, I read oh, it last did. year and then she posted that screen grab of it that was like super blurry. And I was like, oh my God. She, she's, you know, she'll take the first Google Images result no matter what. Literally. Um, That's good. But, like, other than that, I'm sort of grappling with the reality that this is going to be the case for, like, probably another eight months. Yeah. So, like... Yeah. Yeah. Summer's it's, canceled. Summer's canceled. I'm just taking it on a day-by-day approach and just getting through the day and trying to make the most of the day rather than trying to focus because if I go outward macro and think about it in the long term, it becomes very depressing. So I try and find the good in the day and do things that'll entertain me and see if I can't get myself out of that headspace. But I also think it's good to be realistic and it's looking that way for sure. Yeah. And it's funny because, well, in the end of the last episode, when you told me that, you were like, oh, do you remember when you were, like, drunk? I'm like, this is going to be the last time we go out for a really long time. Yep. Which was me exposing myself as, like... Drunk. Well, yeah. But, <laughs> but also, also, like, when I was following all of this news in, like, December, and, like, yeah, I was like, if this gets any bigger, like, this is going to be a problem. And so now yeah, I'm kind of like... Yeah, you early on. Yeah, I was like, let me start stocking up now... You know, I was a little, um, just like Bionic, which is having her 10-year anniversary coming very soon. I was a little ahead of my time. time. Now I think I'm just kind of like, oh, okay, this is what that looks like. Yeah, some days are harder than others. Today I actually woke up and I was pretty... Somebody tweeted, like, I just wish I was, like, locking eyes with a twink at Rosemont in the backyard. And I was like, you know what? (laughs) I feel that. Right? It's the little things. I know. I think but then I was thinking to about those things, yeah. right? Like I, I was thinking this morning. I was like, because uh, we'll we'll get to it later. But like, there's some new songs that came out, and I was like, oh, how depressing that like there's going to be no festivals for like a year. Mm-hmm. But then I was thinking about it, and I was like, you know what? That first one that we go to, or that like you go to, or like anyone at home, like that first thing that you love that you get to yeah. do the next time is going to be so euphoric. Absolutely. Like, I do think there's going to be so many exciting things that happen after when we eventually do have life again, where it's like, we're so full of gratitude that it'll just be, everyone will be crying and hugging each other. But like, actually, like, I really do think, and this, and we're taking this like so far, welcome to Oprah's um, Soul Saturday. Mm, oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, <laughs> soul Saturday. Saturday. Um, I don't think the world's going to be the same after this. Like, are people going to want to stay home? And binge TV once this is over or like, I don't think I want to, like, I want to be outside. I want to, I will never skip another plan. 
Yeah, I regret ever turning down every single invitation to go out. I was always introverted in the sense that I didn't want to go out ever, even though I was living in the middle of the city. And now I'm like, I can't believe I ever turned down any invitation to go out ever. I will never do it again. I mean, I don't know how much I'm sure we will burn out from going out once we finally can, but I still feel strongly that this generation is going to feel a lot different about socializing. Oh, big time. And I even notice it now. I feel like people, even though they're staying away, it's like everyone's kind of, at least like in my building and like in my neighborhood, people are always like waving and smile. It's like everyone, there's like the energy of people missing mm-hmm. interaction and it's just strangers that are like, I just my felt like- My father and I go to the track and there's always at least two or three people, socially distant, of course, but they they would never go, hey, how how are you? Like there's like this rushed like, oh my God, you're out here too. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's very that. And it's like, people are so thirsty for just a little, uh, just a morsel of interaction. And I feel that hard. I mean, the world's not going to be the same on the other end of this. And we've only just begun uh, having our non-fun. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm hopeful. I'm I'm looking forward to the positives of the other side of this. I know that there's going to be a lot uh, that isn't so great on the other side. But anyway, I'm just trying to get my priorities in order, get my goals in order. I, 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 like you said, all of my aspirations and things like that have kind of shifted a little bit, or I'm just sort of renegotiating what I actually want to do and why I want to do it. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to reacclimate. And also I, I I know where I want to shift into. Oh, I I don't dream about it last night. I also feel very, this is even pre quarantine. Like I hate that. I don't, I'm not an overshare on social media as far as my feelings, really. Like, I do sometimes have, like, a a personal essay or so, but, like, I hate that I might not come across as, like, going through it or, like, feeling certain types of ways just because I don't want to be that honest, I guess. But that's always been my problem with social media is that it's just, like, one side of you. But I also don't want... Well, because what am I gonna people, if you, yeah. if you post stuff that's, like, vulnerable, then they're like always oh, people God. that use it as fodder against you. It's, like... Well, that's true, too. But also, like, even I was having a very uh, not good day on Friday, and all I said was I was annoyed. And, like, the a ru- rush of people being like, are you okay? It was like, that was nice, but I'm also like, yeah, any any hint in the, the crack of self-confidence or anything, people are just like, are you all right? So it's so hard on social because you just can't really be honest, especially as an emo boy. Uh, my live journal side rarely comes out. <laughs> Well, I think all people also are being very um, not sensitive, but like in tune with people's feelings, or like really. But... I gotta say, Queen Lindsay, Linny Bunny, she fucking called my ass out yesterday. She's oh, really? Like, she's like, I know that you're not okay, and I know that something's wrong. Call me right now, and I was like, No, I'm fine because I don't like to bitch to people. Mm-hmm. And she's like, No, call me. And she like went in, and I was like all right, fine, you're right. And then I just like vented all this shit out and I felt so much better. Sometimes it's all you need and that's really insightful of her. Queen. Yeah, like actual queen. Yeah, that's good. And she I think doesn't let me, She doesn't let me bullshit her, which is good. Yeah, like you said, um, and you've said before, like checking in with people, especially at a time like this, is really important because nobody's shouting necessarily that they're feeling isolated and lonely. But sometimes we have to check in with each other. Yeah. We'll take it day by day. And we are going to get back out on the streets eventually. And there will be things opening again. It's just going to take some time. And you just have to remember that it really isn't forever. No, I mean, at some point there will be a vaccine or something. Yeah, because at the end of the day, either, yeah, without getting to whatever, like either... It's just going to pass through everyone, and we'll have herd immunity, or there's going to be a vaccine. And Moo Moo's the science guy. Isn't that the theme song? Yeah, that is. I don't know what comes after it. Though. Already, uh, isn't the latest that they've been testing so many New Yorkers, and they found that at least one in five has had antibodies already. So it's showing that it's actually moved through New York so much more than they even thought, and that a lot of people already have had it. I guess we'll wait and see, but. We will get through this. It's just a matter of getting mentally through it. And um, it's not literally jail. Ellen was wrong. Oh, my God. I still can't get over that. 
Well, they couldn't either, so they removed that video. But oh, <laughs> oh you know, act the fool, girl. I'm here. <laughs> act the fool. She's slipping. We've discussed this, but her ratings. She dipped under the view. I think she's in fourth or fifth place now in, in that bracket. Uh, let me just sip my coffee one second. That, that, that was not the sound that I was going for. <laughs> no, this, I was going to do... That's a little better. Sorry. She's um she's a sound engineer now. Um, ASMR. My response to that is um, the view is getting what it deserves. And it should be the number one show because it is the number one show. Mm-hmm. It is so good. And I, more than anything, I just want this to all be over so that they can sit at the same table again. Yeah, we need the, the close-up bickering. <laughs> yeah, part of your job is to listen to me. <laughs> I can't. I need Joy back. Although yeah. her like at-home attitude is very mood. Yeah, she's done a very good job, obviously, Wendy at home is on its own planet. Iconic. Very iconic. She she makes headlines every week, but this week was she is talking about Gaga's new boyfriend, and she was like, "He's educated. He's rich. He's successful. He's smart. He's everything Stephanie is not. He's some sort of real smart guy, like money and smarts and good education and everything opposite of what Gaga is." Is that good for her? Yes. <laughs> My Stephanie Jeromato. It was, I don't even think she thought I don't before think she, she knows said what that. she said at all. Because she said it so she didn't pause. No. She just meant to say that he has a different experience than her. She didn't really mean like she's Gaga's the dumb. Right. She was just like, oh, this is like a a businessman, whatever, and stuff. And Gaga's from the art world. So she probably was just making that sort of call. But the way she set it up was beautiful. (laughs) Yeah, I really don't think she even knew. She didn't, of course. The monsters did not take kindly to that. And I don't blame them. But it was, I don't think it was intended like that. But get that headline, Miss Wendy. I mean, it's just so everything. It's so funny. We have to, if you can find it, I feel like we should insert that soundbite because it's the way she sets it up is so amazing. He's smart. He's talented. Everything that she's not. Oh my God. I could make that its own thing. Everything opposite of what Gaga is. That is that one. Oh, that's bad. (laughs) That's so bad. Well, I guess we should move on to the news of the week. But before we get into this week's events... (laughs) We want to give a big thank you to our Patreon Legends Only fans over on Patreon, patreon.com slash legends only. Thank you guys for your support in helping us host the podcast and buy the soundboard and do all these weird experiments with technology. And starting on May 1st, everyone that is in the $2 and up tiers will have access to all of our bonus content for the indefinite future until, you know, things settle out. That's right. And we will be working on new deep dives very soon. If mm, Bionic Desire 10 years what? allowed to have a break, oh, we yeah. will have Bionic 10 years. We have a poll winning Ashley autobiography mm-hmm. and a few other. We got to dive into Lindsay when her album or whatever comes out. That's true. We have a deep dive into Carly Rae Jepsen's emotion. We did Santa Claus Lane. Iconic Santa Claus Lane listening party. And then magically, all of a sudden, Santa Claus Lane was on streaming like the week later. I was like, oh, okay. Um, And more. That's on our Patreon. But we just wanted to say thank you to everyone. Thank you, everybody. And we will have more for you very soon. Yeah, speaking of thank yous, a Legends Only fan sent in a theme song for this next segment, the first segment of the week. Fan demanded, fan created. Fan fan demanded, fan created. I don't even know how to tee this one up. Just, I'll just hit the, the just roll the clip. So our world is going through such hard times right now. Coronavirus. And we're all staying in. Coronavirus. And we're all staying in. Coronavirus. And we're all staying in. 
Austin and Austin and stream and or purchase Glory so that we can get it on the Billboard Hot 200. Yes, everyone, it's Britney's coronavirus watch. 24-7, Coronany. <laughs> Coroni. Coroni. She's been such an active player in the in the coronavirus world, making headlines every week that we thought we'd we just needed to highlight every moment. So it felt right. Yeah. We, and we might already have a podcast about her, so it kind of just makes sense. <laughs> oh, do we ever talk about Britney Spears? <laughs> um Yes. The Britney podcast, which is also available now on all streaming services for free. <laughs> Um, she has had this strange, not like comeback, but resurgence unintentionally Yeah, this year just by being her humble self. It's true. Now this week she herself, uh, I would say didn't make too many waves. Uh, we, we did get some memes. We got a book recommendation, uh, the book of awakening. She also true to form posted a video of her dancing, then deleted the video then uploaded it with a vintage filter and then un- unfiltered for our viewing pleasure slash uh, we could decide which version we prefer yeah i didn't really understand that decision but it's a little art- artsy fartsy it's a little ahead of its time so you know it's a choose your own adventure sort of situation <laughs> um and then oh she also posted one under the gates of her home i th- think it's her home with like these beautiful flowers for earth day and she you know celebrated the earth so you know she's just doing what she does um the the posting and deleting is really people are definitely aware of it by now oh because it happens so frequently every time no reference intended it's and i'm sure there's uh, people who have because i used to have them where it would send me a notification. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure people are getting the notifications like every single time and being like, where'd this go? Absolutely. I, I do think I joked about it. I do think it is the vintage filter she likes and then does, doesn't use it. And then does, I don't know if she slightly tweaks the, the cut of it, the crop of it. I don't really, I don't know. I still think it's the comments. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I do think that it's the self-confidence knee that jumps in sometimes and she gets a little, considering that she's had probably about five clapping back at the haters posts in the past year of being like, I post what I want, haters, don't be mean in the comments. I feel like she's hyper aware. That's why I feel like it's the comments, because she's been so vocal about people being mean. I'm like, where is she seeing this? It's kind of iconic that instead of deleting the comments, she deletes the whole post and does it over again. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, but she would do that. She would. She said, well, let's start this over again. Like, I'm sure she probably doesn't know how to, like, delete a comment. Maybe not, but... See, these are the little things that I'm like, I need to know. I know. I, I want to know. know, like, what app on the App Store she bought to edit her photos. Yeah, especially the whole music side of it. Like, what mm-hmm. what is she using? Splice? Is she using... I don't know. TikTok? Right, could like be you just could TikTok. download the song and then overlay yeah. it in iMovie. I, you know, little things. It's little things that don't really matter, but like I want to know. Yeah, or does she send it to a media manager who who puts it together for her? But then the deleting would be insane because because most of them, I mean, not most, many do have social managers, so they're the ones who they send through a picture, they send through a caption, they're like, "Put this up for me" or something. But uh, I don't think Brittany does. Who knows, but it's nice to see her active. Definitely her. Yeah. Speaking of active, she's not the only one who's active. Her boyfriend, Sam Asghari, has also been active and made headlines by doing so after he was photographed taking a run wearing what appeared to be a jockstrap on his face. And you know what I think that calls for? What? High fashion! (laughs) So I just want to know. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh my god, that's so high fashion. So high fashion. And truly, there was nothing more high fashion than no, that was Sam's mask. So Vogue. That could be a billboard. Yeah. Yeah, he... Um, so, at first, I was like, that literally is... Like, that looks like a cup from, like, Little League days. Like, that looked yeah. like... I thought it was photoshopped at first. I was like, oh, why did someone... That's funny. And then I clicked in and I was like, oh. Yeah. However, 
after there was one tweet in particular that went viral of the picture of it. And then if you scroll all the way through the comments, eventually somebody called out, it is a $69.99 mask. It is real. It's an oxy- O2 something or other mask, and it is expensive. It's called the O2 Curve Mask. Um, it li- literally, if you look it up, it looks like a fucking jock strap, like a cup. And every all the models in it look ridiculous. <laughs> it looks like these men and women are O2? all wearing O2 Curve Mask. It literally looks like the clown brigade. It like, is a jock strap. <laughs> and it's so many pictures. I love the one of the uh, girl texting with it on. I'm obsessed with it. the red one, especially like that is that's clown chic. That it's a is billboard. <laughs> true clownery. Honestly, if they were smart, they would do something with that with their marketing. That's what. I, that's so funny. You said that as soon as he made headlines, I was like, if they were smart, Sam would be like, yeah, I was wearing a jock thing or whatever on Instagram, and then linked to the real thing or whatever. Like he would have called out right. the attention he was getting. You could literally do a photo shoot where, like, a person stands in front of someone's, like, waist. Yeah. Yeah, wow, that's um, interesting. Even the package of it looks like a freaking jockstrap. The box. Right? Did, I mean, They clearly I guess don't they, have any gays on their team. They do not. Or maybe they do. <laughs> maybe that's the problem. Oh, true. <laughs> Sabotaging. God bless him. He got a lot of media attention. There's going to be a lot of people in this world who just think he was wearing a jockstrap on his face, and that's fine. Um, it would have been me if I did not get that update. Yeah, I mean, somebody needs to issue a press release immediately. Well, we just gave them fucking promo. We did. I know we did. Sponsor us, O2 Curve. Anyway, so that was um, one high fashion editorial moment. I'm going to say one thing that is probably more um, dancing, but it actually ties into one of the points we're about to make, which is Queen Lisa of Blackpink who are about to be on a certain album, released a dance video uh, dancing to a song that I loved last year on the Silk Sheets playlist <laughs> called Mushroom Chocolate. Uh, Ew. She... <laughs> I don't know what it means and why that's gross. It um, sounds gross. Well, anyway, she does a very sexy Flavor. dance to it. And <laughs> she's wearing like thigh-high boots and just looks like incredibly hot in a crop top and dances amazingly. She's gone viral for her dancing before to that Jason Derulo song in concert. And uh, it also was like one of the most highly trafficked posts of from work this week. All the people wanted to see that dance. So give it up for her, but she looks really hot and uh, yeah. Want to be her. So I love a thigh high. It, that's, that's really the selling point for me. That's Lisa Blackpink in your area and also in your Chromatica. That is true. We're going to have to discuss the, uh, our little Stephanie. Yeah, we will. So speaking of music, do we want to get into Chromatica first or should we get into the loan releases? Um, We could do Stephanie first. Yeah. So, okay. This is getting kind of insane. Every single part of her campaign is leaking first. So Stupid Love obviously came out like two months early. The album cover, they accidentally uploaded the album cover to her official web store. The track list was accidentally uploaded to the Target store. And now, as you might have seen, snippets of Rain On Me and Babylon and Free Woman are floating around the internet already. Yeah, it's on her Instagram. It's her. <laughs> there are a lot of memes of people posting like Ariana squinting in response to the track list because it's like embossed and hard to read. It is a little tricky, but you know what? It's art. It's art. But anyway, track list leaks a day later. She Instagrams it. And um, so there's like three interludes, it looks like, called uh, Chromatica. Chromatica 1, Chromatica 2, and Chromatica 3. So, you know, a theme. It's very um, stripped intro. Yeah, I'm a little worried about those. We'll see what she says. So we have the opening with Chromatica 1, where she's probably like, ladies, welcome (laughs) to Chromatica. (laughs) Wow, that was a good one. That's what you think it is? (laughs) Greetings, human. What does she say at the beginning of GUI? It's going to be that. Oh, um, what does she say? Greetings. Does she say Himeros? I don't. Something like that. Yeah, God of sexual energy or something. Anyway, she'll she'll just use that same intro and she'll pretend like um it's new. <laughs> I feel like it's going to start out with like metal sounds, like grinding, and then she's going to just speak in like a robotic voice and going to say. Probably- It'll say initiating, 
as a word. That was a big okay. word for me. Um, that was, yes. So then you think it'll be more like the opening of Janet's discipline where it'll be like her like clicking clacks of the keyboard. Yeah, like you'll hear a machine churning, like the gears that are on the cover, you know? Yes. Are you, are, is, totally that, are, is anyone at home with me on this journey? You're yes, sitting on a big metallic yeah, gear. Yeah. There's a little yeah. rust on it. So it's like catching the sides a little bit, that grit, a little sand. She's logging onto the computer that's on the cover of Grimes' this album, basically. Yeah, she's like, it's going to be so bad. <laughs> Initiating Chromatica. <laughs> So we initiate into Alice. She just, you know, she just jumps right in. She's like, so do you guys love clubbing? Are you dancers? (laughs) And that's how Chromatica starts. (laughs) Official leak. I know we're leaking the album right now. That's crazy. Honestly, we should just make a ghost account. That's like uh, Stephanie Jaramato, number one fan. Like is the (laughs) at. (laughs) <laughs> and we just post like the leak we oh should a new leak of alice <laughs> and it's just are you dancers and then it just goes into i'll do it <laughs> um yeah so we'll see what alice is then we move into stupid love heard of it love it um now the next song is rain on me the much poorly hidden collaboration with ariana that has leaked in different snippets like 10 times already. There's like 10 snippets floating around. Sounds like a bop. Sounds like a vocal accomplishment. A lot of sangin'. Do we think that this whole like Chromatica era is intentional leaks? Like, is this part of the plan? I don't know if it's intentional leaks or just gays. Like, I just feel <laughs> like... <laughs> I kind of just feel like gays That's a cannot quote there. themselves. <laughs> That's a billboard. <laughs> Literally, like... I don't know. I kind of just feel like too many cooks in the kitchen heard it and are too eager to share their with their friends that they've heard it. And I don't think she's doing it because I feel like it's taking the wind out of the campaign again and again. I don't think that it's helping. Like, I don't think the leak for Stupid Love made it better. Right. And it doesn't really go further than social media. No. If you wanted to... I could see leak. She has, I believe she herself leaks aura um, on the forums, but I don't know. Anyway, Rain on Me, that's clearly the one that I think a lot of people are looking forward to. Uh, There's one called uh, Free Woman. It's about uh, a woman. A free bitch. bitch. Yeah, basically she's like, I should use that line again. Yeah. (laughs) I'm a free woman. Oh my God, she should sample her own song for it. She might. That would be kind of legendary if you ask me. The next song I feel might be a reference to us. Um, It's called Fun Tonight. Oh. And I think it's about having fun. We're all going to have fun. (laughs) I don't really see what else it could be. So that's really cool and fun. Then we have the Chromatica 2 interlude where she's like, you're still listening to Chromatica. I don't know what else she'll Track seven. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. She'll probably, because didn't she do with like, what was the Vegas residency called? Uh, Enigma. Yeah. Wasn't there like the character that she played? There sure was. Enigma, the, the character. Right. So I feel like Chromatica is going to be a, a woman. Maybe. Or like the alien. That'd something. be a, a good Overwatch character name. Yes, it would. My name's Chromatica. Possible. I just feel like it's going to be more like um, no one is greater than the other on Chromatica. In Chromatica, love is equal. Love is everything. Oh, so you think it's a place? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a place. A noun? Uh Uh-huh. It's where we're going. Gotcha. Um, And the people are called, what is it, like love warriors or? Yes. freedom Happiness uh, pandas. uh, Kindness punks. Kindness punks, right. Yes. And so the next song, she is clearly just borrowing a demo from Britney. It's called 911. Um, Somebody actually tweeted, like, oh my God, 911 leaked. And it was just that Britney unreleased. 911. Oh, yeah, that's an interesting one. (laughs) Yeah, that's not one of the best ones, no. But, you know, she heard that demo and she had to have it for herself. So that's clearly what that is. Um, 
The next one is called Plastic Doll, still keeping in the theme of unreleased Britney. She has attempted to create her own original doll in this song. It's clearly um, an homage to the original doll era. I mean, obviously. So Plastic Doll, just like Barbie. Allegra Cole. Allegra Cole. <laughs> more Shout out to Allegra Cole. <laughs> The next one is the one I'm looking forward to the most. It's called Sour Candy with Blackpink. Now, they've had a ahead of their time, they had a collaboration with Dula Peep called Kiss and Makeup, which I enjoyed. And now they have Sour Candy. Um, I expect good things. I expect a dance routine. I the Korean consulate already tweeted about it. So the nation of South Korea is prepared. And I hope it's it's gonna be an up tempo banger for sure. Now the next one's called Enigma. Because the concept of the Enigma residency was Enigma. So I guess she's going to just be the alien for that one. Yeah, seems like it's a, an homage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm very curious how the little monsters feel about a uh, concept <laughs> like that lasting as long as it did. <laughs> um, now you know how we felt. Yeah. So uh, piece of me reloaded, remixed. Yeah, piece of me remixed into just adding "Breathe on Me" and mm-hmm. removing an entire prop piece because she didn't want to like move. Yeah. Yeah. You know. That's wel- welcome to Enigma. Welcome. You're one of us now. Back to Enigma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have this homage to her piece of me. Now we the next song is called "Replay," which is either going to be a cover of Zendaya or is going to be was what's his name Iaz <laughs> remember that song oh um shorty is like a melody in my head <laughs> right my iPod stuck on replay play play, play. <laughs> so oh, that's the cover of that chromatica is that you <laughs> <laughs> then we have chromatica 3 where she's i guess just going to be like you're still listening to AOL first listen chromatica that would be so funny <laughs> Honestly, someone needs to reference that moment. They do. A little watermark moment. Know who could do it? This is a free idea. Okay. Um, DUA music, first listen. Oh, oh. See what I did there? I do. That'll be perfect for future nostalgia. It gets more nostalgic. The deluxe edition. There you go. (laughs) DUA music. First listen. (laughs) Good idea. Thanks. So then we move into sign spelled S I N E, like the trigonomic term from above featuring Elton John. Now, I don't know what that's going to be about, but the fact that it's called sign from above, like, do you remember um, having to do that in school? Like the triangle, and then you have to write, like, what was it? Sign. I. You find the sides of the angle, the, the, or whatever. Anyway, this is not a math podcast. Nope, wasn't my uh, specialty. <laughs> Although I did do really well in geometry. Let's talk about geometry. <laughs> <laughs> so she's you gonna be talking about trick you and me. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, that just came out. Um, so she'll be talking about like triangles and angles or something, probably on this one. Really cool. Uh, then second to last is called a thousand doves. Now, there can be 999 doves <laughs> in a row, <laughs> but all you need is just one more to make a thousand. Um. <laughs> and finally, Babylon, which kind of leaked already, like a snippet of it, and it sounds fun and clubby. I haven't heard any of the leaks. All in all, though, the snippets have been pretty exciting to me. Like It sounds like it's a wall-to-wall dance album for sure. So I'm thinking, you know, despite the fact that it's going to leak by next Tuesday, I think it's going to be a good album. Do we think it's going to come out still soon? Yeah, I think at this point, too, like, she's being almost, like, forced to... Assuming that the leaks are not from her, I feel like this is getting unfair, and she's going to have to. True. It's, like, kind of rude. If it's not her, then it's really fucking rude, because it's definitely falling... Apart. Apart in pieces already, and... It's a shame because I'm sure this was a heavily visual album. I'm sure it relied a lot on live performance. And so it just kind of sucks because it, it seems like a very colorful album and like that there was a lot involved in it. So we'll see. 
I don't think she filmed more than that, but maybe there's another video lined up. Maybe. <clears throat> or she could just play the Cake Lake Lady Gaga video over her new song. Why not? Okay, so that's Chromatica. It's coming out sooner rather than later at this point. We also have songs that came out officially this week, so that's nice too. Yes, we do have some new music. I feel like it's slowing down though. It is, and I've seen the latest Billboard uh, headline was that streaming is still down. Interesting. Uh, My whole career is music, and I'm not listening as much. I don't know. Yeah. Half the songs, I test if they're good, if they're good for strutting down the sidewalk, you know? Yeah. Like, that's what we want. And now we can only do that to go buy essentials, so it's a little less. But there are some songs that came out this week, including one that was already out, but it's been remixed, remastered, and still iconic by Miss Casey Musgraves. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a world. 2.0. Not to be confused with Genie 2.0. Right. Similar concept, but Mm -hmm. this one's for Earth Day, and it's just um, a song from Golden Hour that's been redone. I actually like this one just as much, if not better. Oh, same. Oh, what a world is my favorite song on Golden Hour. Yeah, it's beautiful. So this was a delight to hear again. Yeah. Because it still has yeah. that like beauty, like yeah. She released a video with it, and then um, also tied it in with I think a Worldwide Foundation. Mm-hmm. Um, so it had a, a good meaning, and it's a great song. So if you haven't, if you're afraid to dive into the the Casey world by now, like give that one a go. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, and I and love the other can... video for it too. Yeah, like that trippy, like three D. Yeah, I believe. I believe Oh What a World is the one she wrote on Acid, but... Oh, that would explain that. <laughs> trying to see if that was the one that she said. It opened her mind, I believe, is what she said. At some point. I don't know. But there's that. And now you can take us onto the dance floor with the EDM request. Oh. Re- recommendation. I do. Um, well, Galantis has a new song out with Ray Bull, And mm-hmm. I love Ray Bull. This is more mellow. Okay. It's slower and it's really cute and they just wrote it I think like two or three weeks ago like it's a new song Uh, yeah but it's just really cute I enjoy it it's good um I haven't listened to that one yet I do have some quick recommendations obviously I've definitely gotten some messages a lot of you checked out the Rena album and if you haven't yet check it out the Rena Sawayama album uh it's really the gays are really running with it now um excess is the hit from the album right now uh, there's the Jesse Ware song called Ooh La La, not to be confused with the Smurfs anthem that we all know and love. <laughs> it is obviously not as good as that, but it is a close second. Uh, it's a disco song, so Jesse Ware stays consistent with her disco. There's the Evanescence comeback single, uh, which obviously I have been perched for for a decade. It is called Wasted on You. It's Queen Amy Lee returning to her throne. There's another bop by Ray, R-A-Y-E, who remains like a flawless dance queen lately. Every song's a hit. And then finally, this album I'm loving by Lennon Stella. Now, she starred on Nashville, um, and this is her debut. I'm really loving this album. It's kind of, uh, I'm not going to call it whisper pop because she sings, but it's very like um, moody, songstress, kind of electro pop. Mm. very very good kind of more in the world of like broods and uh who else i don't know anyway it's really good so we'll have those all on the legends only weekly and i believe t kyle has a set of remixes that need attention oh yeah my last recommendation of the week was queen ally brook ally's us yeah <laughs> queen <laughs> ally brook and her song with afro jack mm-hmm. all night they just did this batch of remixes and there's a festival one, which you can just tell is like the cut for a festival. <laughs> the concept of it. Uh-huh. The concept for the video circus is basically about, you know, a circus. <laughs> and um, I was just like, oh, this sucks. Like this would have been so good live. Next year we will make up for it. So thank you, Allie Brooke, for your dance floor service. And we will hopefully see you at ultra 2022 yeah (laughs) at this point yeah uh so who else do we have to talk about we do have to just miss taylor is back in the headlines oh now 
this is some fuckery that I've seen them try and pull on a lot of our favorites, not just Taylor. So I'm once again siding with her because this stuff is always bullshit. Her old record label, the people that bought out her masters, dug up an old live album, live from the Clear Channel from 2008, and dumped it online. And she took to her Snapchat, not Snapchat, Instagram story, and wrote a little note and was like, uh, basically, they're trying it. I don't approve of this release. Clearly, they are regretting their $300 plus million purchase of my master's, and they're trying to scramble for money. This is an old recording, and I don't approve. So instead, what I've seen is a lot of the Swifties grabbed it, uploaded it on YouTube, or uh, just like, you know, on Tumblr or whatever, and they are streaming illegally to not support um, her old label. I've seen them do that to like, like my queen Utada and like they've done like a, a greatest hits that she didn't oh, wasn't aware of or approve of. I feel like there are some Britney compilations that are like weirdly oh like the essential show. Britney one. Yeah, that are like okay, I guess that's a cash in for money. Um it's pretty ballsy to release some, something like that and just not expect her to be like, uh, I did not say you could do that. But I think if I was a fan, like a diehard, I would still want that album. Right. Like it's such a weird middle ground because I'd be, because I think, remember right. when Lindsay Lohan's albums weren't on streaming for the longest time? Yeah. Wouldn't you as an artist want all of that, like in an easy spot for people to, I don't know. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying too, because it's like, because like fans are like, they die for that stuff. Like they want that stuff. Totally. I think Any it's more acoustic like, custom performance is yeah I think she was just mad at the fact that they were doing it without her telling her and that they were and that obviously she's not going to get anything from it which it's still I understand why it stings it's still her music that she wrote it sucks I have a feeling she probably doesn't care that her fans are distributing it illegally probably not which is kind of fierce I don't I don't think she'll be issuing takedowns herself so maybe what she can do, she can counter it with a new live and quarantine album. Yeah. She totally could do that. Isn't she planning like a live stream or something soon? Well, she had Lover Fest that was canceled, but she might be. I feel she's been pretty quiet, although I know that she's having some personal issues with her mother um, being sick. So I don't know if that's just totally that or if she's got something up her sleeves, maybe that she's working on at home. That would be nice. But I think she should definitely counter that with like a live in quarantine 2020 record we'll see i'm sure it'll inspire some new music for sure yeah but maybe we should get on to what everyone's been waiting for the biggest release of the week of course being instant influencer the youtube beauty competition hosted by james charles over the next month i'll test their artistry camera presence and potential to be a beauty superstar. But in the end, only one can become an instant influencer. Undoubtedly, objectively, the only thing anyone was talking about for mm. weeks. You guys, I implore you to watch this. Now, it uploaded on Friday. You had already seen it. Yeah, I literally watched it with the premiere, like the actual live. <laughs> As a number one sister, T. <laughs> Kyle watched it during the premiere. The first episode's co-stars, um, Norvina, who's from Anastasia Beverly Hills Cosmetics, and Queen Paris Hilton and her dog, who really steals the show. Those were some interesting camera angles. The- <laughs> I mean, all of it was The dog was just very- like, Bleh. <laughs> The dog... <laughs> permanently has his tongue sticking out and it is very iconic the concept of instant influencer is yeah we have to back up for a second for everyone we do so this was announced last year james charles is hosting a youtube beauty competition for fifty thousand dollars a home studio worth ten thousand dollars and i believe um oh and a youtube video with james on his channel is the prize Um, oh my god four million dollars right (laughs) there's six yeah six six finalists potential influencers and they face off in these challenges every single week and then there's a guest judge and then they have to send them home correct and it's a search for the next youtube influencer because 
Don't America's we next that. Mua. Mm-hmm. I will say the concept is kind of appropriate for what the world looks like now. Oh, totally. But James Charles as a host has been extremely entertaining. It is so entertaining. Um, he every moment is memeable because he talks so fast and so he fast. <laughs> uh, he is throwing in his tagline sister in everything. What was that one line that I sent to you? It's like, oh god, I, I like, forget. That was a sister sprint if I've ever seen one or something. Yeah. That is some sister sprinting if I ever did see it. Oh, and our favorite line, which was what was it? It was uh I love that you use the word sis. Yes. Because it's Paris. like sis. <laughs> and I love that you say sis because sis over here always says it and I just I love that. So in the competition on the first episode, they were tasked with picking one product from the wall of Ulta Beauty products not sponsored yet. And even though it said paid, <laughs> yeah. I was like, this is but a paid not partnership. Yet. Also should sponsor us, considering how much we talk about beauty. And oh, yeah. <laughs> so these, like, mostly 18 to 20-somethings, I guess, scrambled, picked out a product, and had to do a three-hour... Um, they had three hours to create a instructional video promoting a new product and why it's so great. Now... I was... Sc- okay. <laughs> So like literally everyone on that show is is this is them doing a makeup tutorial. Hey everyone, this is the all new blue eyeliner. Okay. Oh my god, <laughs> sis. And sis, like you have no idea, sis. Like, period. Like this eyeliner is an eyeliner, period. Period. The house bouts. Period. The house bouts hunty. Yes, girl. That's all it is. All of them. They're just it's constant. Um <laughs> Obviously, Benny is an early favorite. Uh-huh. <laughs> this tiny twink who is literally every word is sis. I'm going to just show you guys how to contour, get snatched, and get a man. Okay, sis? Okay. Uh, what was his product again? He did, like... Uh, Wasn't it Skims or Kim's? KKW uh, Beauty, is that it? Yes, he did uh, uh, contour. Yeah. yeah, he did contour. Um... He was like, sis, this contour will get you so snatch the house boots down, hunty. Uh- <laughs> What's that other meme where it's like, yes, spilling the true tea, hunty. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, that's all. It's not words. It's just phrases. It's just that over and over. Then they get judged by Paris and Norvina. Norvina fully does not want to be there. Looks absolutely disgusted by James Charles. <laughs> Yeah, she is also, um, the lighting was harsh. Uh, very harsh, yeah. And it was very 4K. <laughs> yes, that's that a good way. That was a wig. Yeah, for sure. Now, James, as a host, was thoroughly entertaining in introducing them to the cast. He was like, and this queen needs no uh, yeah, introduction. Our next guest judge needs no introduction. She's literally iconic. Our second judge needs no introduction, let's be honest. (laughs) She's iconic, legendary, and totally hot. Paris Hilton. Everything is just that. She's a legend, she's an icon, she's literally iconic, and her name is Paris Hilton. And then she's just like, I think you're hot too. Yeah. And she's so hot. she's so hot, Paris Hilton. (laughs) I think you're hot too. Yeah, that's basically how that went down. Um, my favorite part is that as they gave the critiques to each influencer's video, Norvina would be like, you should smile more. You're not really telling us what the product does. Your face bothers me. And Paris is like, I just thought everything was great. Yeah. I just love it. <laughs> With the highlight she's like, line I being... I literally love the coat you're wearing right now and I want it for Burning Man. Paris? I love your jacket. I need to wear it to Burning Man this you year. You can borrow it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't I think even you're have- so cute. <laughs> I, and our personal favorite critique, I just love that you say sis. <laughs> Honestly, does that need to be on the soundboard? Because it was... I kind of think so. I feel like that should replace any mention of talking when somebody's gay. Just, I love that you say sis. <laughs> and I love that you say sis because sis over here always says it. And- <laughs> like, that was her critique. Yeah. I just love that you say sis. 
because it's like sass. <laughs> and you know, James here is his sister, so. Also, James's outfit for the judging panel, mm-hmm. the shoulder pads. <laughs> Business power, 80s woman, yeah. L- like full Gaga, like shoulder yeah. pad <laughs> moment. I'm like, this is like Claire's beauty pageant. Like, what? Right. <laughs> so entertaining. I'm obsessed with it. Deeply. I will be tuning in every week during the premiere from now on. Um, I can't get enough. And we'll just have to see how the cookie crumbles with this next influencer. I know. Who's I'm obsessed get the top next? with the fact that to be in a video with James. That's so amazing. I also can't with how they eliminate them. Yes, that's the other part that we love is that they all sit down sort of like um, webcam style. Right, it's like panic and, room. Yeah, panic room style. James videos in and he's like, hi sister, you made it to the next round. You're and then they safe. awkwardly, <laughs> they walk out into the room and they're like, oh, I guess you made it. Okay. And they all like congregate. And then the last person, he walks in himself and he's like, hi sister, um, bad news we didn't think you were right yeah i just want to say you're literally amazing (laughs) that's why we picked you don't let anyone tell you otherwise so he's now hugging this crying influencer and he makes them film an outro as their final salute it's so comical and it worked because there were already half a million views two hours after it aired and i'm sure that it's only taken off since i wonder where it's at over this weekend right now because i feel like it was a hit let's see james charles instant influencer right now it's at four million views jeez when i was watching there was like two hundred and thirty thousand people watching live yeah it's crazy it's obviously trending on youtube um she she is the moment (laughs) it's really i just like that it's short too yeah it was short and sweet um and it was full of very um comical lines it was filled with a lot of highlights. <laughs> oh, highlights. Mm-hmm. There you go. So yeah. blinding. <laughs> Love your makeup. When is Jacqueline Hill going to get her? <laughs> own? Jacqueline Hill's greatest scam. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of the voice, it's the lipstick. We've put together a giant haystack filled with hair. One bottle of lipstick is inside <laughs> <laughs> I can't honestly know what they need to do. There needs to be a survivor season of Mua's. Oh, absolutely. Or they also Big one of Brother. the challenges should be the apology videos. We've given you one gray sweatshirt and a blank background and an eyedropper to make tears. <laughs> make your apology video. Right. And then it's Paris Hilton critiquing it. Right. I loved how sad you were. <laughs> Your tears were so cute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm obsessed with her. I don't care. She's and it seems like she's transcended generationally because like she's our girl, she's our time, but like Gen Z seems to love her. Yeah, because she's such a meme and she's right. so self-aware. Pretty iconic if you ask me. Pretty legendary if you ask me. <laughs> I love it. Well, I guess that about does it for everything that's most important this week. I know. It's the last week of April. Is it? Oh, yeah, that's true. It's really flying by. Well, anything on the horizon? Well... Chromatica. uh, Chromatica. I don't really know. I did just see a headline literally while we were recording that Lindsay says she has a song with Britney that she might release. What? Hold on. Let's get this soundbite right here. I was actually doing um, the YouTube chat when the record, when the album was released, well, the single was released, and Britney came into it. And we had we had a song together years ago, so maybe we'll collaborate on something. That would be really cool. And while there were rumors... Like- uh, Is that new? Okay. So she just claimed that Britney went into the YouTube Q&A that she just did, and then she said, we had a song together years ago. Maybe we'll do something again. What? Um... I'm trying to think of uh, what song that could be. Dramatic. <laughs> right? She's like, I I was on that song before, Heidi. I don't know if she means, I don't know. Leak it. Yeah, leak it. Whoever whatever is that. leaking Chromatica, stop what you're doing and go leak the Britney Lindsay song instead. And Yeah, exactly. Well, you never know. I mean, songs like Bossy and Walking Out of Talk, like all of that could have been demos from Britney or 
they both cut them at the same time and she did like a Heidi dramatic thing. I don't know that they had a song to get. Well, I guess Lindsay this says so. It's for legends, okay? It really is. I guess that's what our highlight our, on the horizon is, the Lindsay and Brittany collaboration from God knows when. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the story of the times? God knows it's, what day it is and God when. God knows. I just don't know which song it could be. There is her song Too Young to Die was produced by J.R. Rodham, who obviously dated Britney and said some trashy things. So maybe it's that. Actually, yeah, there is like, it might be Too Young to Die. Hmm. Maybe. I'm not sure. Again, Lindsay, bless her. I don't know. She said some things lately that haven't totally lined up with reality. She said her dog lived to be 27, um, which maybe so. She also said that she had new music and we got a That's new single. True, so, so who knows? We're going to say Lindsay's dog lived to 27 years old. She recorded a song with Britney and she is releasing an album. Wouldn't be the craziest thing to happen this year. That's actually true. <sighs> Once again, we've somehow managed to mention Lindsay, Paris, and Britney in one episode. Mm. <laughs> Those are simpler times. They really are. Well, I guess that about rounds out the week's events. Yeah, that's about all for this week of Legends Only. So <laughs> there's um like four weeks until my birthday. So oh, I'm trying right. to plan a fun stream. Yes. We'll definitely do that. So if you see that I'm live on Twitch or YouTube, it probably means that I'm testing something new. So come say hi. It's a good thing to put out there in advance so everybody knows. Mm-hmm. But until then, we will see you soon. <laughs> Bye, sis. Bye. Oh my god. Bye, sis. I love that you say this. <laughs> <laughs>